Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about my OG favorites that got left behind. So these are products that I used to use all the time. They were ride or die status for me. I recommended them to everybody. I use them almost on a daily basis with the exception of like an eyeshadow palette because we all know I changed that up. But I use these products so much and I don't use them at all anymore and they're not products that I don't suggest because all of these I still would suggest to certain people but I left them behind they have been replaced and I do not use them anymore so let's start off with some Mac products because if you are not new to my channel you know that I started out Working at Mac, I started off like with really reviewing a whole lot of Mac products, and I still review Mac here and there, but I have to be kind of drawn in. The first product I actually don't have here with me because it's been that long since I have used it, and it's the Mac Soft Ochre Paint Pot. Now, for some people, it was the Mac Painterly Paint Pot. You either, like if you were, had a pink undertone, you would use Painterly, and if you had more of a yellow undertone, you would use Soft Ochre. I used Soft Ochre, and you could not tell me Nobody could tell me that anything was better than that. I remember people talking about using Tarte Shape Tape to use as their base for their eyeshadow. I was like, no, that's stupid. <laughs> what do I use now? I use the Tarte Shape Tape to prime my eyes. <laughs> but I used to use Soft Ochre to carve out my brows. I used it for priming my lids and it was so good. And I still think that it is good, but I think that as I have gotten older, something that thick on my eyes is not necessarily a good thing. And Tarte Shape Tape can be a little bit drying, but it's still thinner than what the <laughs> paint pot is. So I still think that it's an amazing primer for your eyeshadow but for me I feel like I have a little less texture on my eyes now that I'm not using it so that's the first thing next we're gonna move on to this one from Kat Von D and you know this is OG because I have the original packaging this is the shade and light eyeshadow palette I remember buying this and I was so excited because I got it before it was actually released because they accidentally told me on the phone <laughs> that they had it in stock and I drove all the way out there they're like look we're only on this because we told you that we had it but we're not supposed to be selling it and obviously this was a long time ago I bought this palette because of review purposes only I did not think that I was going to love it so much and then it ended up being everything to me like I love this palette so much and I used to use this to death like to death I love this palette and I would always recommend it in like my favorites and this and that but now it's, it's been a while. It's been a while since I have touched this and I would say my new favorite neutral palette is unfortunately a limited edition palette. It's the Aspen Ovard palette from Tarte. I'm sorry, I know, I love it, but this used to be the thing for me. I used to love this and I would wear it all the time and I still won't get rid of it for nostalgia purposes and I like that I like that I have like the cardboard packaging and whatnot. This is one of the first palettes that I really truly felt in love with outside of Mac. <laughs> Raise your hand or comment down below if you remember me never using anything other than Hourglass Diffuse Light to set my under eyes. Now this powder is gorgeous. It is so pretty but I have changed. So this is Hourglass Diffused Light and there's several different shades you can use for depending on your skin tone and how much radiance you want or whatnot. But this powder was the only powder I think for a solid three years that I would use to set my concealer. It didn't matter what concealer I used, it didn't matter the foundation or anything. This was it and I remember being in MAC at one of the training sessions and this really brightened up my under eye. I was all about a really bright under eye back in the day and one of the leaders was like um what are you using underneath your eyes to have it so bright? And I was scared to tell them. I was like, honestly? Uh, and I told them and they're like, I'm gonna write that down. I was so, I'm telling you, I was so scared that they were gonna be like, Mel, you're supposed to be wearing MAC. But no, this was, and still is such a beautiful product. If you're looking for something that's lightweight and it's going to add a little bit of radiance but without being too much, this is beautiful, but I had definitely, have now joined the baking train and I'm very particular about my under eyes. Sometimes I use two different powders, but 
That thing, I could not even tell you how many I have gone through. I think it's one of the most gone through products I have ever used, like just over and over and over and over again. This one is a product I thought that I would never, ever, ever switch. I just felt like this was it. I didn't need to try anything else. And then of course I did. <laughs> this is from Makeup Forever. And this is the step one skin equalizer in the smoothing primer. So they have several different ones. They have hydrating ones and whatever. But this is the smoothing one and I would use this to smooth out my pores. I loved this stuff and I still think it's good but the thing is now I feel like there are things that are better. I think that what knocked this out the first time was the Milk Makeup Blur Stick. I went and I went for that one hardcore. So I didn't think that it was going to knock it out but I just found myself steadily using the milk makeup one more and more and the one problem I have to say about this is you have to store it a certain way like upside down otherwise you will get like this like oil that comes out but this is a really good smoother I have pretty deep pores I know a lot of people think that I don't that's just because I'm really good at filling them in <laughs> but this you have to store upside down or it's going to have like this weird oil that will come through and then you're like squirting more of the product out to get the oil out before you put it on your face and yada yada. So this used to be a ride or die for me, but I cannot even tell you the last time that I have picked this up. And now of course I'm using the one from Tarte, the Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer and they have changed the formula on that. So I've heard both sides. Some people say like, oh yes, it's still fine. It works for me great. And some people say, no, it doesn't. So I'm just prepared to go back to the Milk Makeup Blur Stick if the, when I have to repurchase, if that one goes bad. So anywho, let's move on to a mascara or mascaras because I use these in conjunction with each other. I used to wear lashes. I wanted to put lashes on here, but I feel like, you know, I still do kind of use lashes from here to there, you know, but I used to wear lashes on my channel and in my daily life every single day. And then I started using New Lash. New Lash made my lashes grow and I don't use lashes as often, but I was all about mascaras and which one was going to make my lashes look the best. It was really exciting for me. And a combo that I really, really loved was this right here. So we have the Dior Show Maximizer 3D Triple Volume Plumping Lash Primer, as well as the Dior Show Mascara. I still think that these are phenomenal, so I don't want anyone to think that I think that these are bad. I still like these, but I have mascaras that I like so much more and I don't feel like I need to have the primer. But I wore these just like the Chanel. I, but I've changed my mind on the Chanel one. There's something about it. I don't know if they've changed the formula or what, but I feel like I don't like that mascara anymore. Whereas I still like this one, but I don't use it because I have found other mascaras that I don't need a primer with and that just do the job. But this was my go-to for quite a while, or at least in my rotation but these are beautiful but I have moved on my favorites now are let me just name five you know just five I love the Pat McGrath I love the um, CoverGirl Exhibitionist I love the Bomb Mad Lash I love NARS Climax I'm sitting here looking in my drawer <laughs> the Lancome Monsieur Big just several different mascaras this just kind of you know slid that one over. Let me tell you how long I just searched for this product before I started this video. And I was about to lose my mind because if I did not find this, I was going to go crazy. This was my very first highlighter and it was my ride or die. I loved this so much and it is the MAC Soft and Gentle. I went through one of these and I had to get another one. This I actually ended up finding it in my kit. I don't do freelance makeup anymore but I found it in my kit because I was going through these drawers like where's Soft and Gentle? <laughs> but that I have not put this on my face in so long but I will never forget how I felt when this was put on my face. I remember like everything about that day. Sitting in the chair, I got warm soul on my cheeks. I just had my makeup done. I was buying some product. This was before I worked for MAC. And she put this thing on. I was like, what? what is that? I, I didn't even know what a highlighter was at that time. And 
she was like, oh, it's this and it does this and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my God, I need that. I need that. But I've got a budget today. I'm not going to buy it, but I need it. Girl, I came home and I ordered it. <laughs> and this graced my cheeks at least for the first entire year of my Mac career. Like I was so in love with this. You could not tell me that anything was better than soft and gentle. And now I, I couldn't even tell you the last time I put this on my face. I have switched highlighters so many different times, but this one, I have memories. Like I feel like I always am going to have to have this in my collection because memories. I have little sticky notes for all the ones that I don't have in my collection right now. And this one is the Urban Decay Chill Setting Spray. So I loved the original just Urban Decay Setting Spray All Nighter, but then I went to the Chill and I just really fell in love with that one because I felt like it was, it didn't dry out my skin as much. And I have found that this style of setting spray does dry out my skin and so I don't typically go for anything now. I love the Armani Prima and several other sprays I have on hand in case I actually really need something to work to really make my makeup last. And this one I would still say is a good one, but I feel like the ones that I have, the Armani and then the, ooh, what's what, the Glam Glow Glow Setter. I love that one as well. I feel like this one, like I'm used, I'm, like this, this is the Urban Decay Chill Setting spray but I felt like that one really just started to dry out my skin now I prefer things that are more on the hydrating side I have found a few including the glow recipe I'm gonna be talking about the glow recipe watermelon mist or whatever it is until you guys are sick and tired of hearing about it because I've already ordered a backup but the Urban Decay chill makeup setting spray was my ride or die for a very very long time. Now I'm jumping back over to MAC. This is the Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. The highlighter was a Mineralized Skin Finish, but this is a Mineralized Skin Finish Natural and it is the powder version. I still think that this powder is really, really nice. It gives you a velvety texture. It gives you a little bit more coverage. You can actually use this as a powder foundation but I have found that I don't particularly want to have any more coverage on my skin. I don't necessarily mind to be matte. I do think this makes you have a more matte but velvety kind of matte finish, but I feel like this adds coverage and I don't want to add any more coverage on top of my foundation. I just want to set it and more so I like to use more of a glowy type of powder now and even matte powders that I use still tend to have some kind of radiance to them. The closest thing to this that I use on my face now would be the Chanel Loose Powder Number 30 Natural. I feel like it kind of gives this kind of effect, but it's less heavy on the skin and it doesn't add any type of coverage for me. So this used to be the only thing I used to set all of my foundations, whichever one I used, but... I just don't use this anymore. I couldn't even tell you the last time that I used it. And all of these products, that's the whole thing behind them. I'm not talking about products that, oh, this used to be my ride or die. I still use it every once in a while. These products I do not use anymore. Like I just don't use them anymore. Uh, the next one is from Marc Jacobs. And I'd had this little mini right here. This is the highliner. I fell in love with this like the first time I used it because I remember putting it on my inner rim up top and down below and it just stayed for me so well. But I started to realize that it was getting on my contacts, which was getting on my nerves. <laughs> this product I think is really good for some people, especially if you don't wear contacts. Uh, but when you do wear contacts and you are putting it on and it gets on your contact, this does not move, it does not come off. So it's not like, for me, I'm not gonna do it on camera because I know it's gonna freak some people out, but I can just touch my finger like to my lid and get, you know, a piece of glitter out. I can get some shadow out of my eye. I can get, you know, a hair, whatever. 
I cannot get this stuff off of my contact to save my life. So I have to then go to the bathroom, get to my contact solution and get it off. And it's just this whole ordeal. I still think this is a great product, but for contact wearers, oh, it's annoying. <laughs> and then last, but certainly not least, because I have gone through several of these very large bottles of the Philosophy Purity Made Simple One Step Facial Cleanser. I saved this bottle specifically for this video. This was my ride or die cleanser for years and years and I would go through and use other cleansers and like other cleansers but I always went back to this one and I know it was Jaclyn Hill. I, I just remember, who remembers Jacqueline when she was on at her table in her dining room filming, you know, like, and she would talk about this cleanser and I had to have it. And I used this pretty much from that point until about, I don't know, maybe a little less than a year ago. I don't remember, but it's been a long time since I have repurchase this because I've been using Tatcha. I have one from Skin Ink that I really like and I think that I found out that this actually dries my skin out just a little bit. I don't think I ever noticed it at all before when I was using it because it was a constant in my makeup in cleansing routine. So I never thought that this was drying out my skin just a little. I don't think it was like really drying it out, but I think it was a little. And I always said, and I, so I apologize because I didn't know, <laughs> but I always said, oh, it doesn't dry out my skin. You know, it's not a foaming cleanser or this or that, but having not used this for a long time, I feel like it might have dried out my skin just a little bit. If you're oily, you're probably going to love that because it's not going to really strip the skin, but it's going to clean it. But for me, that is something I don't think I'm ever gonna purchase again. And it's, which is crazy because I used it for so long. But anywho, that is the last product on my OG favorites that I've just been knocked out. I don't purchase them anymore. I don't use them anymore. And it's not that they're bad. They're just not my preferences anymore. Everybody changes and my makeup style has definitely changed. But let me know down below one of your OG favorites that you just fell out of love with. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.